let's say I have some object like a metal key. And I want to plate that with silver. So I'm going to place here a silver rod. My solution down here will contain silver ions in it. The key, I always hook that up to the negative terminal of the battery because the key needs to gain electrons. Electrons need to come down here and my silver needs to come over on the surface of the key, collect electrons, and turn into solid silver. So this would be the reaction. Silver ions picking up those electrons and turning into solid silver on the surface of that key. Over here at this electrode, the silver is going to lose electrons and they'll be drawn in by the positive terminal of the battery to form silver ions. So silver ions will form as the electrons leave and this will be the reaction, an oxidation reaction over here. So, so long as I still have some silver ions or silver rod left, I can continue to plate the surface of my object. So that brings us to the end of the redox unit. In our next program, we'll take a look at cell calculations. In this particular question, I'm going to start off with determining how much copper is plated on, say, a, a metal key that I'm plating. So I would hook that metal plate uh, metal key up to the cathode, connect that to the negative terminal of my battery, the positive terminal of my battery would be connected say to a copper rod and I would have a solution that contains copper ions in it and those would move over here, pick up electrons and turn into solid copper on the surface of my key. My question is how much copper will be deposited on the key when it's operating with a certain current over 30 minutes. First thing I need, as with most stoichiometry questions, is a balanced equation. In this case, I need a balanced half reaction. So what's happening here is the copper 2 plus is picking up two electrons and turning into copper solid. And my question here is what's this mass? To do that, I'm going to start off with some information that I'm told here about the number of electrons. I'm given information about the current. So current is given the symbol I, and I'm going to convert this into amps. So this would be shifting the decimal 3.200 amperes. And the time that it's operating for in seconds would be 1800 seconds. From these two quantities I can determine what's called the quantity of charge. Quantity of charge is the product of these two values. So the quantity of charge by multiplying these two together I arrive at 360 coulombs of electric charge have moved. I'm now going to convert that information into moles. And to do that, I divide by Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant is 96,500 coulombs per mole. So that's uh, the symbol F there for Faraday's constant. So when I take the 360 and divide by that, I now arrive at 0 0.00. 373 moles of electrons. Now I'm going to employ the coefficients in the equation, the 2 to 1 ratio that exists between these two. Hence the number of moles of copper would be 0 0.00, oh, about 187. And that would now be moles of copper. And now we convert that into grams of copper, multiplying by the molar mass of copper, 
63.55 grams per mole. And that then gives me the answer up here and we arrive at uh, about 0.12 grams of copper being deposited. So the second half is somewhat familiar. What's new is what we're doing here. So there's two relationships that we'll employ. One is to determine the quantity of charge as the product of I times T and then to convert quantity of charge into moles we divide by Faraday's constant. So these two relationships are employed over here to convert our electron information about electrons into moles.